Hello and welcome to today's webinar titled Small Business and Local Search. My name's Pat Cam and I'm Chairman of the Accountants Accelerator Group. It's a group of proactive accounting firms from all around Australia who share and pull a lot of resources. This webinar has been produced exclusively for members of the group to share with their clients and today our primary presenter is Travis Gribben from Design Build Grow Co. And he's going to discuss the opportunity local search presents for business owners, the factors that impact your local visibility, and how you can increase your visibility. Welcome, Travis. Thanks for joining us today. So, and thanks for the opportunity as well, Pat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through how small businesses can leverage the power of local search. And really it's how do you maximize your local visibility. So what we'll cover is what is local search? Because some of you may not be aware of what it actually is. Is it an opportunity for yourself and all your clients? What are the factors that are gonna affect your local search visibility? And how can I actually increase my local search visibility? How can we get more prospects coming to your client's business? So I guess what is local search? It's, it's very simple. If you've ever thought about using a service or finding a product uh, in your local area and you decide to Google it. Uh, so everything that you see in a local search is, is there. That is what local search marketing is. Anything that you search for with a near me, hairdresser near me, plumber near me, whatever it may be, um, or a specific location. So let's suggest it would be uh, mechanic in Ormond. Uh, so that, that is what is defined as local search. Uh, the search engines, and in this case it is Google for the most part, they will assume um, when you search for something generic that your first port of call is local. So it's, it's very important that you get it right. So this is a search that I've uh, pre-prepared, which is tax accountant near me. And what I'm going to do is run you through the different components of a local search results page. This first section here highlighted in red is paid advertising. So this is the, uh, the rivers of gold for Google. And this business here uh, are paying for the privilege of being seen before anyone else. Every time someone clicks on that ad, that accounting firm is paying for the privilege of that click coming to them. The next section, which is just below, which I've highlighted in red, is local maps. This is where you can really start to get into um, seeing some results in your local search marketing. The local maps there, so I've searched for tax account near me. It knows my location at the time that I made the search. So it, it populates the map with accountants that are specializing in tax. Um, and it shows me where they are based on uh, my proximity. The next section that sits just below that is called the local pack or the local search content. And that is based on businesses that, or in this case accountants, that are displaying the most relevant information based on my search query. So I've looked for a tax accountant. Um, they need to be in the right location based on where I am. They need to have their website live and their website needs to talk about tax accounting. accounting. They need to have their opening hours there because what Google doesn't want to do is send you to a small business or a local business that is about to close based on the time it'll take you to get there. And the next thing which is really important is reviews. Does this business have reviews in the first place? That is the first determining factor. And the next factor that they look at is are they positive reviews and, and do you see a mix of reviews as well? So having reviews is paramount to being found in this local pack. So put simply, local search determines how easy it is for a prospect to find you. And there aren't many businesses that don't want to be found by prospects. So is it an opportunity um, for your firm? Generally speaking, the initial thoughts revolve around my client wants to grow, they don't want to stay local. You know, if we're ambitious, we want to attract more than just local clients, which is all well and good, and it's good to have lofty goals. Um, however, I think the opportunity that exists in local area marketing, especially from a digital perspective, is being missed. And here's a couple of examples. 
So this screen, I've done a search for emergency plumber in Oakley. So not just plumber, I've gone and drilled down into a specialization within plumbing. So I'm only after an emergency plumber and I need it to be in Oakley. So when we look at that, you would assume that it is a real niche offering and it would be difficult to run a business based on just doing emergency plumbing and just in Oakley. So you can see there, there's a, a highlighted area for where the search results will come from. Based on that, there are just shy of six and a half thousand people or, or queries a month looking for an emergency plumber. Solve the numbers. I think you'd need 10 plus vans to do that and that puts a lot of food on the table. Trav, that is an extraordinary number of people. Six and a half thousand people Google that term every month, roughly 78,000 people per annum. If just, if our, if our listeners could convert just 2% of those people per month, that would be 129 contacts. And then if we can convert 25% of those contacts basically into jobs, and the average job value is $500, um, our plumbers would be generating $16,000 of additional revenue per month, or on an annual basis, $192,000 per annum. That is an extraordinary opportunity from local area marketing. The next example, if we look in the New South Wales market, is Barbershop Parramatta. Again, it's not the Parramatta region, it is just the suburb of Parramatta, which is highlighted there. So if we look at that, you'd assume that it's a relatively niche offering and it wouldn't be that competitive and there wouldn't be a real huge demand for it. However, a touch over 35,000 queries a month looking for a barbershop in Parramatta and that excludes hair salon, hairdresser, it's people looking specifically for a barbershop. Huge numbers. So Trev, looking at these numbers for barbershop Parramatta, um, 35,432 people a month. Um, again, if our barbers and hairdressers out there could just attract 2% of that traffic, that'd be 708 contacts per month. If we then converted 25% of those people to customers and the average job value or value of each haircut was $35, that would generate monthly revenue of just over $6,000 and on an annual basis, over $74,000 of additional revenue. For the barbers listening in, what would that do to your business? And last is an example in the Queensland market, which is for a mobile mechanic in Chermside. Chermside's a well-known uh, area just north of Brisbane, which has the big Westfield and so forth. Um, and I'm looking in this instance just for a mobile mechanic in Chermside. Touch over 21,000 people within Chermside itself looking for a mobile mechanic. They're not looking for an auto mechanic, they're looking for someone who's actually going to come to their premises and conduct whatever it is they need done. So I guess the takeout point here is that local search and local area marketing from a digital perspective is a huge opportunity for all business, I would suggest. Um, businesses who have one location, businesses who are looking to service a small area or a region, it's a really good starting point to look at your own turf start to own that and then spread your wings from there. So Trev, um, 21,306 prospects per month. Um, if you could attract 2% of that traffic, that would give you 426 additional contacts per month. If you could then convert 25% of those 426 people and the average job value for that mobile mechanic job was $500, that would convert to monthly additional revenue of over $53,000. And on an annualized basis, that would convert to $639,000. That is just a massive opportunity from local area marketing for our mobile mechanics just in Chermside. So next we look at what affects my visibility. So we've seen that the opportunity is there, um, pretty much regardless of what you offer, um, there will be people within your locale that are looking for your services. So the first thing we need to do is look at your Google My Business page. If anyone 
has a client that doesn't have a Google My Business page, that's the first thing you need to get them to do. Um, there's a verification process that they all go through and it needs to be done by the business owner. So what they do to rank uh, Google My Business page is they wanna make sure that you're within the proximity of the searcher. They wanna make sure that you offer the category of service or product that they're looking for and that you have the keywords in your Google My Business listing that are in natural language that speak to the search query that's been made. That's a very simple one. So long as you speak naturally, then you start to be found for uh, prospects that are searching for your business. The next thing, which is the second most important thing, and it is somewhat of a technical um, requirement, which is, they, they call it link signals, and that's how many other websites within the area are linking to you. Um, without going into um, a whole heap of technical detail, what you wanna have is people within the area uh, linking back to your site and using the terms that you want to be found for. Very important to have those. The next thing, which is one thing that uh, small business um, for the most part are either daunted by it or don't see it as being a huge opportunity is reviews. Reviews are the third party endorsement that people give you uh, so that other people can see you know, what level of service you offer. They, look, they will consider things like pricing, they'll consider customer service, they'll write a, uh, a Boolean natural language review, which is a reflection of your business. What you can't do is stop them, so you need to manage them. And what Google looks for is review quantity. Do you have one review? Um, one review is better than none, but it's not as good as, in this instance, 44. Review velocity and diversity. Velocity is how frequent or do you have a steady stream of reviews? What they wanna see is that you have a natural flow of reviews and the review diversity is, what they wanna do is make sure that you're not getting all five star reviews or you're not getting all one star reviews. All five star reviews would indicate that you're offering an incentive to get a review, which is breaching the terms of service and all one star reviews would hint at a competitor gaming the system to try and take you out of business, um, which does happen. And those sort of things can be fixed so long as they're monitored and you look after your, um, your review program. Next thing is on-page signals, and that's a really easy one. So that's about getting consistency of your, and it's called NAP, your name, address, and phone number. Make sure you have your name your business name written everywhere online that you can control in one format. Make sure you have your address in the right format, in the exact same format across all of the directories, your own site, your Google My Business listing and so forth, as well as your phone number. The next thing is, do you have keywords in titles on your site? And does your domain have some authority? So if you've had a site for 10 years, they, they see that as being having more authority than something that has been live for um, the last week. Now, this is somewhat of a, a technical one, but it makes a lot of sense. Um, citation signals. What they wanna see is that your name, address, and phone is consistent everywhere online, and they wanna see that you're visible in as many places as you possibly could be. The next one is really interesting and it's becoming more and more prevalent, which is behavioral signals. So how many people click through when your business is shown as one of the options? How many people click on your Google My Business to call your business to maybe put it in an order or make a booking? How many people check in when they're actually at your business premise? It's a, it's a really easy one to encourage people to jump online, offer the free Wi-Fi and whatnot. And the next thing is, and this is something that is not just useful for ranking, but it's also just useful for your um, prospects customers, is how, many, how easy is it for you to offer directions using a mapping program? So how easy is it for someone to find your business using Apple Maps, Google Maps, whatever it may be, um, and how often do they use it? 
this is something that it's with big data coming on board more and more as the years go on personalization so based on the user's previous search queries and what Google know about you you'll see over the next couple of years they know a lot um, have you dismissed a business as a viable option in a previous search and have you done it on multiple occasions so if you've been searched for something let's say search for accountant haven't found what you're looking for and then you search for tax accountant haven't found what you're looking for and then you search for tax accountant near me if you've seen a business in all three of those uh, search queries and you have decided not to even click on them for whatever reason they won't show you that business again so you get a personal search result in the next time you come in based on your wants and needs And then the next thing which is really interesting is a lot of small business, um, a lot of big business actually will go down this path as well. And they will say things, yes, but all my friends are on and it will be their social media channel of choice. And yes, people are on social media. And being social is useful. It shows your prospects that you are willing to engage across multiple channels. It's not just the phone and the, uh, the shop front. The, the old window dressing days are near on gone. Um, it gives consumers channel of choice. So if they like to uh, have some dialogue with you or see if you have happy customers, what you've done previously through reviews, they'll go through that. Uh, if they want to see what you're doing on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, whatever it may be. And it's whatever is appropriate to your business as well. Being social is very useful, but it's not mission critical in a lot of industries. If you look at something like a, a, a hair salon, um, it's a very visual thing. People like to see the before and after. So that's a really good one to be running on Instagram and Facebook because there's a visual component there. Doing it on Twitter is probably less useful because it's all text driven. Um, and it's easy to spend a lot of money on social media and not see any return because most people don't track it and all they're, they're doing it just because one of their competitors is doing it. It can be a money pit, but it also can be a wonderful resource for you depending on the industry you're in. We tend to focus on what drives results though. So finally, what does affect your visibility? Social signals are one of the things um, and they look at Google, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Google has Google search queries as well as Google My Business. Facebook includes Instagram because it's a wholly owned subsidiary of it. And Twitter, obviously have um, Twitter and Periscope as well, but Twitter is probably the third on the list there. And it is pretty much in that order regardless of the industry you're in. So what can you do to improve your local uh, visibility? Put simply, there are three factors. If you wanna get on the shopping list of a prospect, proximity, are you close by? Product fit, do you offer what they need? And then the third one, which is uh, the bit that a lot of small business don't seem to take into account is perception and proof. In the old days, it would be called branding and word of mouth. Um, but perception proof is what do others say and what are they saying in an open forum? So I'm just going to focus here on one of those line items, which is perception and proof. As you all know, a bad review can kill a business and great reviews can create a killer business. They are becoming more and more important, not just from a, a search engine ranking factor, but uh, people are taking into account third-party reviews a lot more than they are uh, client testimonials that are sitting on, um, on your own website, which are called first-party reviews. Small businesses, uh, for the most part, don't ask for reviews or they don't know how to handle their reputation online. There, there tends to be a fear, which, um, fear of asking for a review and getting a bad one. But what you need is you need the feedback so you can actually improve your business. And we've developed a system to help small businesses be able to do that and be able to do it on a really consistent basis. So we've got an automated system for gathering feedback and reviews. What is it? Um, it's really simple. It's about reputation management. 
And once you've got the feedback, it's about publishing them online so that others can see it. That's the distribution side of things. So how does it work? It's a feedback first approach. What you don't wanna do is go out and say, could I have a five star review please? Because one, you don't know if they would actually give you five stars in the first place and you wanna get the feedback first. So what you do is you ask for the feedback privately in a traditional, how did we go process. It gives you the opportunity to address any negative feedback. It gives you the opportunity to capture that positive feedback as a testimonial that becomes your first party uh, review. And then you also make it easy to leave online reviews as well. So once you've captured the feedback, you then can turn that into a review in a third party. So here's a graphic that we use to demonstrate how that works. So you ask your clients for feedback and it's a, how did we go today? If they say they weren't happy, you can handle that as a, as a, as a business issue without it being public. So it's, it reduces the overall number of bad reviews you get. You're not gonna be able to stop them, but if you can negate it by gaining feedback first, it gives the, your customer the opportunity to vent, which is what they wanna do. They don't wanna ruin your business, they wanna vent and they wanna see something rectified. And in that feedback um, request, you get obviously some people that aren't happy, but for the most part, you should be seeing people that are happy and you start to find out what it is that is great about your product or service that you're offering. And then once you get that, you prompt them with a very simple, natural language request to say, thanks for the feedback, that's really useful. We really appreciate your business. It would help us enormously if you told other people, here's a link to, and you use your channel of choice. It may be your Google My Business. If you're in uh, the food industry, you could use Zomato. If you're in um, the salon industry, you could use True Local or Google My Business. Each industry has a niche player, but for the most part, Google My Business is uh, the one you wanna be doing. But if you can see here, you're creating your own feedback loop where you have control over getting that, that venting process direct, directly back to you and you can start to rectify your, the situation. It also gives you a really interesting insight because you may not be at the coal face and you can start to train staff on how to better serve your customers. It's very simple. So how does it help your business? You avoid the negative online reviews. It allows you to get more positive online reviews which in turn, as we saw earlier, reviews are the third most important uh, factor in ranking. Getting good reviews actually lifts your, um, your search rankings. And then from that, you obviously are able to get more repeat business and referrals. Gives, you, gives your prospective customers social proof. They know that you're gonna say that you are the best, you are the number one X in your area, but they can see a, a third party endorsement, it always helps you. So just quickly, some definitions. Feedback is when you get private feedback from customers in a one-on-one -on -one situation. That can be uh, direct with them if it's an in-store uh, prompt. It can be sent out via an email or an SMS. A testimonial is where it's displayed to the wider public. So a testimonial is where you've taken the feedback and you then prompt them to leave a review. And then the review is where it actually lives. So Google, TripAdvisor, Zomato, wherever that may be. So that was a quick snapshot on the opportunity that's presented to small business in, within the local area marketing scene, primarily from a digital perspective and Hopefully you've been able to gain some insights into one of the ways you can help to lift your client's profile, which is through review management. My details are on the screen now. You can go to our website or feel free to drop us an email there. Thank you. Thanks Trev, that information is absolute marketing gold for businesses that rely on local traffic such as restaurants, hairdressers, barbers, motor mechanics, plumbers, carpenters and electricians. We hope you found this webinar valuable 
and all the member firms of the Accountants Accelerator Group are committed to helping you grow your business, your profits and your wealth. Until next time.